right, and we're back to the best part of the show. We are getting started with tea time. Yeah. So excited. Um, But yes, so um, if you all don't know, Goddess Lode was actually already on our show. Um, she was there at, she's a co-host of also ladies night. So she was on there with Jackie, shout out to Jackie. Jackie is the family. Um, so we did get to talk to you then. Um, but now you have your own show, (laughs) sexual frequency on TGN Latin X. So congratulations to that. I just want to start off by saying that that is major. You stepped out on your own. You have this wonderful show on our new platform. So those of you who missed her first episode with us tell us miss goddess lode who are you how old are you what do you do like give us kind of a synopsis don't tell too much about what your show is about but just tell us who you are Hmm. um so i'm goddess lode and goddess uh just came from me having a transformation and really being in touch with my divine feminine energy and uh, i am 42 years old no way. Every time you say that, I'm like, she is lying. I'm like, I need to see your birth certificate. Like, there's no way you are 42 years old. Like, every time you say that, I'm like, no way. <laughs> yes, I'm 42 years old, and um, I'm like on on a new journey of self discovery, and I've been extremely connected to myself and my body these last couple of years, um, and. I'm passionate about supporting individuals to like release any shame and guilt, particularly around sexuality and just being 42 and finally truly living authentically is just really lights me up and I want to support others in doing it. Awesome. Well, that's me. Yes. Welcome. I'm so excited. And I think just everything about you, like your tone, your kind of aura like everything about you like draws at least me in so I hopefully <laughs> it'll draw you in as well like I just love listening to your podcast because your voice is so soothing and it makes me feel so comfortable with the topics that you talk about it's just like okay we get deep in this but I feel so <laughs> comfortable to talk about it so shout out to you girl it is yes amazing amazing thank you so, You go by this moniker goddess. So what does goddess mean to you? Like, where did that come from? It's interesting because in, what was it? 20, 20, 2019, um, I give myself affirmations at the beginning of the year. And the first affirmation that I gave myself for 2019 was I am a goddess And I just, you know, I, you see it every morning and I just keep telling myself, I'm a goddess, I'm a goddess. And I really, truly felt connected to it because in my journey, I've reconnected um, and unleashed kind of my divine feminine energy. And that for me comes from my yoni space. Um, And it was one day it was like, bitch, you're a goddess. Like, Yes, like that's not just a word in your affirmation board. Like this is truly what you were embodying. And embodying a goddess for me is not about like erasing the masculine or erasing um, anything that males can contribute, right? I'm very much of the mind that we have both masculine and feminine energy inside of us. And it's about being able to not even code switch, but being able to switch back and forth into those energies, depending on what's called for. And so for me, goddess just really fit. And it actually happened right before I was going to be on ladies night with Jackie. And she was like, well, what are we going to call you? Cause this is like your first time on. And I had just started my Lotus hustle Instagram which is my business Instagram. And I had put on their goddess Lode, and she's like, I think you should be goddess Lode. And I was like, well, all right then. Cause I fucking am. So let's go with it. Goddess Lode. Um, and I always say at whatever platform I go on that um, me embodying goddess Lode is in no way, shape or form causing any separation with anyone. I don't feel that I'm above anyone. I don't feel like I am, Um, a teacher or I know more I'm very much about you have um, as much as I can learn from you you can learn from me 
right? Goddess is really just more about myself and how I'm feeling. Also on this journey of like finally embracing my body, just like loving every part of myself. Like I am a big, beautiful, voluptuous woman. And um, like the time to like body shame ourselves is over. Oh, yes. It's so it's so old paradigm that I'm sick of it. And yesterday at uh, the TGN pool party, I wore a two piece and I had only ever wore a two piece in front of like my family and my really close friends. Mm -hmm. And here I was, I was going to meet all of these like new people, you know, some of them pretty good looking. I might say so myself. (laughs) Um, And I would, I started feeling like maybe I shouldn't wear this. Maybe I should wear something else. And I was like, you know what? No, like F this, I am beautiful, I am confident, and I am just going to go and be me. Indeed, and I'm so glad. First of all, bum, 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 bum. I wish I had the horns for that. Yes! <laughs> you better embrace your body. Your body has done some magical things. Like you say, you are a goddess. I think that's such a powerful just affirmation. And why not call myself that? Like, I am what I say I am. So I think that is very important. And yes, I'm totally with you. Like, I'll be 35 in a couple months. And I'm like, you know what? They're going to get with everybody that I got. Like, I don't even care at this point. You either going to like it or you're not going to like it. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not for you. Um, But so me and the girls are going to Vegas in September. So last night we were all like, like, we got to work out. We got to get our bodies together. And, you know, we're like, okay, what we packing, what we bringing. I'm like, I mean, clothes going to be optional for me. Like, yes! I don't know what I'm going to wear. Like, I'm going to just go outside in my two-piece every day. Like, pants will be optional. So it, the body positivity, I appreciate you for doing that and helping other women, like, really appreciate the body that God gave us. Like, you don't need no enhancements. Like, Instagram is not real. Like, these women and these young girls need to see that and start to see real women with real bodies because this is the body that God gave us. And if you have babies, you know, I got a son, like I earned this body that he gave me. So it's just like, yeah, I love the body that you have. So yes. And you know, Kendrick talks about it. He wants to see that ass with the stretch marks. So I'm like, here it is, baby. <laughs> Listen, King Kenny said, I want to see it. And I'm about to give it to you, okay? Yes, like, sir. Outside with all my stretch marks. Showing. It's all good. I earned every tiger stripe that I have, okay? That's right. Yes, I love that. And I'm so proud of you for saying that. So yes, you are a goddess very much so. Like the name fits. And yes, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I do want to go into your show, Sexual Freak. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the very first episode, I believe it was your first episode, um, I was blown away just by the conversation and kind of the the story that you told about how you got to the point that you are now. So for those yeah. who might have missed that story on your episode, tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you get into this sexual discovery that you're on? hmm Oh, gosh, a lot of it was hindsight, right? Because we're we're living life. And sometimes we don't realize all of the ways that we are oppressed and suppressed. And uh, I was in a long term marriage, you know, I was married for about 12 years, I was with my ex partner for about 17. Wow. And we have two beautiful boys, one angel baby in between. And, you know, it was one day where he was just like, I don't know if I want to be married anymore. And I was like, what? I was like, the fuck? (laughs) What's going on here? Like, like, excuse me, sir? Right. I don't know what you're talking about. What did you just say to me? (laughs) And yeah, and and in hindsight, it was the best thing that could have happened to me Mm -hmm. for my own personal growth. Um, we had come to a a time and a point in our relationship where the relationship was better off over, um, than us trying to stay together and maintain, um, you know, that the circumstance that we were living under. So, you know, I'm newly divorced. I have two, I have two kiddos and just having this realization of like, who am I? Because all of the things that I 
thought that I was are now taken away from me. Like my proudest accomplishment in life was like my long-term marriage that was suddenly gone. Then it was being a mom and sure. I'm a mom 100% of the time, but my children are not with me 100% of the time anymore. Right now I'm sharing humans and that really knocked me down, but it was a beautiful opportunity for me to find myself again and just fall in love with myself. And it was just such a beautiful, fucking difficult. It was a tough journey, but it's been so, so absolutely beautiful and so rewarding. Um, After I was divorced, first of all, when I knew we were separating, I knew that I wasn't just going to go out in the streets and like have sex, right? So (laughs) girl, let me tell you, when I was getting it in every moment I could with him, I'm like, listen, I know it's over, but you know what? Are we going to do this or what? Like I was getting it in with him as much as I could. And then, you know, once, once he left, I was not, I did not date. I didn't kiss. I didn't touch a man, a woman, no one for about three years. Yeah. Cause the streets is hard now. Listen, Oof. Oof. It's hard to be out on these streets. So I definitely. Yeah. The streets are, can be messy and scary yes. Yes, they can. <laughs> and rewarding all at the same yeah. time. But mm-hmm. you know, I was out of the game for so long. I didn't even know like what the hell, how the hell do you date anymore? Right. And so I knew that before I jumped into another relationship, I wanted to take care of me. Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't be in a relationship with someone after my ex-husband, like right out the gate. Cause you know, I was with him since I was 19 years old. Wow. And so as I just started falling in love with myself again, um, it was this whole culmination where I um, ended up on a solo trip to Paris and Lizzo was the soundtrack of my fucking trip because she was like so hot at the time and everything was so relevant. It's like every morning I was listening to get me some Lizzo every day to get me up. Um, and I got my groove back. I went on a pub crawl um, situation with um, the Airbnb. And the last place that we went to, I ended up like meeting somebody. Like like as soon as I like walked in, it was, I wasn't even there five, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And this man, this beautiful Senegalese man. Oh, he's so yummy. I love this story. <laughs> like I'm like... <laughs> He was just tall and his skin was just, he was a gorgeous smile. I mean, he was great. And he asked me to dance. And so we started dancing and then he's like, let me, would you like a drink? And I was like, sure. He spoke nothing but French. I spoke nothing but English. So girl, Google Translate (laughs) was was everything. Yes. Yes. So um, I never had a one night stand in my life, right? Like here I am. I can't even remember how old I was. I was close to 40 years old. Never ha- had I had a one night stand in my life. Or actually I was 40. And he's like, let me buy you a drink. So he buys me a drink, but he doesn't get a drink. And I was like, oh, hell no. Red flag. Mm-hmm. I need to call my friends. Like this fool just bought me alcohol. And he didn't have any like, uh-uh. So just doing all the things, but we were at the bar for a good, like three, four hours, just talking back and forth. And so the guide who took us on this pub crawl, she was from Spain and she was like, I was like, what do you think? And she's like, girl, she's like, the men over here just grab you and say, like, come home with me. Like he sat and talked to you for like hours. Like I condone this. She's like, I condone this. And so I go into the restroom and it's, we're talking about friends, right? Like I get on my snack club thread and I FaceTime my friends Mm -hmm. and all three of them were like, okay, tell us blah, blah, blah. They're asking me like all the major questions. And then finally I hang up and I said, I just, I want to go home with him and I'm going to do it. And so it was very taboo for me. I'd never done that in my life. And, oh, he had the best kissing vibe too. So once the kissing vibe is on, you in there Mm -hmm. so what were you feeling like at that point like you were feeling like excited were you nervous like what was your emotions at that time girl everything I was excited because like the chemistry was great between us I was nervous because I'd never even 
did I think that I would be doing this on a trip, right? Like, I don't do this shit in my hometown and I'm going to go in fucking Europe right. and, you know, go home with the man I just met. Like, never did that cross my mind. Um, and then I was scared, too, because, like, we're communicating through Google Translate. Sure, I gave my friends the address that I was going to, but they're all the way in the state. So it was all of the feelings. And then my friend uh, sends me a message, my friend Tony, whose house I'm at right now. And he's like, ask him to take a picture with you. And if he doesn't take a picture, it's a red flag. And I was like, bitch, I'm in the Uber. Like, <laughs> Listen, try to sneak a picture. Like, I would have been like trying to sneak yeah. a picture. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the Uber, but yes, he's down to take a picture. We took a picture together. Nice. And the driver was from Senegal also. Oh, wow. So they start speaking in their language. And I'm just like, is this a setup? Right. Hold up. What's like, going on? <laughs> excuse me. Like, what are the odds, right? But there's a lot of, there's a big Senegalese community um, in Paris. Mm -hmm. And so we end up, you know, going and we did our thing. And I guess technically it wasn't a one night stand because I saw him for the next three days. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was really sweet. He was, he was kind of emo. So like very much like wanting to connect on a deeper level. So it was like everything that I really that I needed to get my group back and my confidence back. And, you know, I told my friends, I was like, this was absolutely amazing. They were calling me like two hours after I went to his mm -hmm. house and they were like, we're freaking out. Like, is Lori okay? She's not <laughs> answering our call. And I was like, I have never done this. Y'all give me more than two hours, please. <laughs> like, oh, right. What? Like, need a little <laughs> like, more time in that now. Like, it has been three years, guys. Like, give me some time, okay? I got to savor this moment. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but it was great. It turned out to be such an amazing experience. And just being in Paris alone, you know, I'm sitting at the river and I'm like, I am at a place that I have dreamt of being at since I was a child. Wow. And it just, I came back completely changed. And shout out today, because it's James Baldwin's birthday. And I made it an effort to go to places that he was there and he was writing. And it just, th that whole trip just really filled me up. And I completely fell in love with myself. And I was like, I'm a bomb ass bitch. Like, yes. what? Yes. I Listen, I'm a goddess. I'm a boss. Like, I'm everything. Like, I yes. did that. Like, I had this man, like, being emo over me. Like, <laughs> I am everything. I, I love that story for a couple reasons. Um, one, because I think I would love a journey like that. Just to travel solo, be out in another country, and just live life. Now, I love how you were cautious. So, A, you, you called the homies and was like, look, this, this is what I plan to do. Here go a picture, like blah, blah, blah. So definitely promoting being safe. But I love how you tell that story. And it does show like that was a pivotal, pivotal moment in your turning point of this, I am a goddess. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do want to be sexually liberated. I think that was huge. Like every time you share the story, I'm just like, wow, she really had a eat pray love type of moment like, <laughs> in real life like I know somebody who's done that so I appreciate that story every time I hear it so do you talk to him like have you had any contact with him since then um the last contact that I had with him was when the pandemic um hit really hard okay and so I you know we kind of checked in on each other and you know Aww. He, he's good and I was good so yeah it's it's nice you know we still we have we're on Facebook messenger okay. <laughs> so every now and then you know we send a message here and there but it for me the piece too that was so important was like when you're good with yourself mm -hmm. you can share yourself in these very beautiful and intimate experiences that doesn't have to mean anything long term I love this person. Um, I'm going to be in a relationship with this person. It's two people coming together and just sharing um, intimacy and exploration. And it doesn't have to be anything more than that, mm -hmm. you know, and this idea and this notion that 
if we do those things, then we're X, Y, Z, yeah. right? Yep. We're a slut, we're a hole, we're a whatever, like, you know, yep. fill in the blank. And so for me, that was just like huge, you know, because I had this experience with this man that I had just met yep. and the intimacy that we shared was just so deep and so beautiful. Um, and it didn't need to have anything else attached to it, but what it was. That is so sweet. And it's reminding me, well, not like totally reminding me, but um, the movie Brown Sugar, where she's like, I just, I needed it. Like I, I needed to have that feeling. So it was totally like you were engaged in all the feels. Like I can't even imagine what that experience must have been like. And then on top of that to like turn 40, which is also huge in our lives to do that. Yeah. Um, so was that like a do a big 40 trip? Is that why you went to Paris? So it was like, that's something I was supposed to go with like two other friends mm -hmm. and one friend couldn't swing it because of the timetable. Okay. Um, and then I'm like, okay, it's over. The trip is falling apart. Um, and I remember going to work that day and opening my drawer at work. And my friend had just had her um, honeymoon in Paris. And I told her how, one of my goals in life was to go and see the Nikkei of Samothrace um, at the Louvre. And if y'all don't know what that is, I'm sure if you've seen the video Ape Shit with Beyonce and Jay-Z, that's where she's just like putting it down in that big white gown, okay? Hey. Um, that was one of my goals, you know, for years and years. And I saw the book and I was like, it's not going to happen. And literally my friend texted me, girl, the flights are really good right now. We should really look into the trip. And I was like, oh, we're still going? Like, my heart just filled up. And then um, very last minute, like a couple days before the trip, my friend's mom became really, was really ill and she was in the hospital. Aww. And she's like, amiga, I can't go. Do you want to postpone? And I said, absolutely not. There was not one bone in my body that wanted to postpone this trip. Like yeah. I was like, no, if I don't go now, it's going to take forever. And then plus there was like the guilt of leaving my kids. Right. My son, he was in um, like transitional kinder and he was going to have a graduation and the school decides they're going to push the graduation back. They're going to do it a week earlier when I'm going to be in Paris. Oh gosh. And everything in me was like, all the things, you're a bad mom, yep. how could you leave? And then there's that other voice that was like, girl, it it's is Paris. traditional gender. Yeah. <laughs> he okay? won't even remember that, girl. <laughs> no, you need to go to Paris. And so I had this beautiful conversation with both my boys. And my mom, when she had gone to Paris, she had bought me this beautiful scarf. Aww. And so I, I gave it to my son, like, you can have this scarf with you on your graduation and know that mom like loves you, but she's going to be in Paris and your grandma got this from Paris for her. And so he's like, I'm going to take it for show and tell. And I'm like, what are you going to say? And he goes, I'm going to say that this is from Mexico. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no puppy, it's from Paris. So he's like, okay, I get it, mom. And oh my God, kids are so funny. <laughs> And the beautiful piece after that was I showed them that that was okay, that it was okay to put me first, that it was okay for me to travel alone. And now I, I would hear them play after that. And they would talk about how like, oh, we're going to go to Paris Aww. and we're going to see the Eiffel Tower. And, you know, all of these, all of these things that, had I still been in this old paradigm mindset, I would have never, I would have said, no, I can't miss his graduation, you know? Um, but I had to really kind of knock some sense into myself and say this whole trip was like very serendipitous. And girl, had I known, had I been more savvy with the dating and the whole thing, I met this fine ass man in the airport See? who was totally feeling me and I had no freaking clue. <gasps> like we, it, like I literally sat down next to him. The terminal was completely full. I had no makeup girl. I was like, I'm on a red eye to Paris. I, I didn't need to impress nobody. 
I'm on Instagram just laughing it up and he's like kind of leaning over my shoulder and he's like, oh, are you going to Paris? Girl, why am I in Paris? And he's like, send me a pic, send me a picture. Girl, I'm fucking sending pictures of like where I'm eating, but like I should have been sending pictures of myself. But like, yes, exactly. I was, <laughs> I was clueless. I was so clueless. I was like a oh, baby. See? See that before and after though, because after the yes. trip, it's like, okay, like now I got, I got my groove back. I know how to do this. Like, again, I'm a boss. <laughs> I'm a goddess. I'm that big. That part. So that, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. That trip was so necessary. And it's funny when you put everything into context, like, you know, having that mommy guilt or, you know, your friends not being able to come, like all of those things that could have stopped you from going on that trip. But in your soul and your spirit you was like I gotta be there like I have to do this for me like this is my time like wow and to think like what do you even think your life would be like had you not taken that trip I think yeah it definitely would have maybe taken me a lot longer to get to where I am now exactly for for sure exactly you would have been still swimming upstream like okay I'm trying to get there but that trip was everything. Mm-hmm. So yes, okay, we manifesting because I too <laughs> want to go to Paris. Yes, like I can't have the name Chanel and not go to Paris. Like I gotta be hello. <laughs> yes, I'm making that happen for sure. So yes, so you said two things earlier that people may or may not know about, but you said um, Yoni, Yoni, and you mm-hmm. said Yoni. Um, sexual liberation, or maybe you didn't say it like that. But let's get into it. Like, what is a yoni for those who may or may not know? And why is the yoni important? Um, So yoni is a Sanskrit word and it means home. Mm -hmm. And uh, your yoni space is everything like from your entire reproductive system, like your uterus, your ovaries, um, your vagina, your perineum, that, that entire space. Um, is your yoni space Mm. and it's believed that that's where our feminine energy um, resides Mm. in our yoni and I think it's no coincidence that the uterus is the strongest muscle in in women um I didn't know that that, and I'm a woman so that says yes okay and it just it houses so much um so much energy it's in where our sacral chakra is and that's what our where our sexual energy resides, which is all about um, creating, birthing. It, it's like that. I feel like it's like an erotic uh, energy, like a current. I like to call it pussy heartbeat. <laughs> yes. So for me, like <laughs> whenever I feel any type of aliveness, um, for me, my vagina like lets me know. Mm. It's like, oh, okay, we're we're feeling this and. And it doesn't even have to be sexually related. Just anything that gets me excited or or uh, happy, I definitely feel that like pussy heartbeat. Just you know that like pumping, and and um, it feels great for me. That journey uh, with connecting with my yoni started again after my divorce, also. But um, I'm very much into crystals. Okay. I, I believe that crystals have um, uh, this vibration uh, to be able to heal, help, and support us. And, you know, me being like, I'm not having any type of uh, interaction with anybody. I was like, I wonder if there is like a crystal that I can use as a toy. Mm -hmm. And my friend was like, I don't know if there's a toy, but there's yoni eggs. And I was like, well, what's that? And so... I started looking into yoni eggs and I did mention earlier that um, I did have a miscarriage in between my two boys. And one of the things that the yoni eggs does is they help um, any type of healing in your uterus, um, any type of, you know, like traumatic pregnancy, traumatic birth. Also like all of the generational stuff we're bringing with us, right? Like the patterns of our mothers and our grandmothers and all of those before us. So I started with the yoni egg and it's literally like a, a, it's a crystal, it's a stone. And those originated way back thousands of years ago, like um, in China, 
where um, the women would use them to really keep themselves, keep their yoni healthy, but also tight. So like when you use the yoni, like you're using your Kegels, um, it strengthens your pelvic floor and, you know, it gets, it keeps your grip game strong. Like uh, <laughs> that part, like, like if you're not down for the healing, but you want to get your grip game strong, it could do that too. <laughs> listen, you do a yoni, okay? I'm yeah. Like so it was a yoni egg and I started with that and that really also just opened me up sexually awesome. to like a different you know, almost like a different vibration, a different frequency of how in tune I was with my body. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where the whole thing started. Wow. Wow. So yeah, I'd, I've definitely heard about it. I didn't know so much of the backstory of what the Yonis were. I definitely, from what I knew them to be was to help you with like Kegels and help strengthen that pelvic mm -hmm. muscle. But I didn't know that there was so much like backstory to it, yeah. uh, which I'm sure I'm not the only woman that didn't know, but I think as women, you know, it's important that we have people like you and other people to share that information because I do think, you know, the womb does carry a lot of trauma. It carries a lot of past experiences and those cycles. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I can't wait to like learn more and, and purchase my own Yoni egg so I can start <laughs> going on that journey as well. But you did just mention crystal. So I am a crystal virgin. And I'm going to just tell you now, like, I don't know anything <laughs> about crystals. Um, Sherry, Renee, the bestie, and our other bestie, Scarlett, they are like the crystal queens. Like, they have crystals. They know about them. And I'm just like, okay, y'all. Like, if they work for y'all, I love them. This is what's up. Like, yes. But your girl is a virgin. So I don't know anything about them. So you said like you were trying to find crystals in a, in a yoni form. So do they have that? And first, let's go back. So mm -hmm. explain like what type of the most common crystals are and what they do. And then how does it help with your feminine energy and with your yoni, mm -hmm. if there's any? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any particular, like, I don't know that much about crystals in okay. terms of like, but I know, like, very common, uh, the crystal that people start with very commonly is rose quartz. Okay. Because rose quartz is a very gentle crystal. And it supports um, self love. It supports healing, clearing of like your heart space, having you gain trust and opening yourself to a uh, to relationships. And so after I did uh, my yoni eggs, which yoni eggs is a journey forever. It's like there's three different sizes. Oh, so it's okay. like you graduate, like I actually have one. So this is oh, like yes. size number one. That's number one size? This is number oh one, yes. So when you, you want it, watch the YouTube, like this thing is huge. Like it looked like a real yes. egg. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. And so you want it to be big initially so you're able to hold it, right? Because you have to hold it inside. Okay. And then once you've mastered that, then you go to the next level. See, it's significantly smaller. Yeah. Um, but Yoni Egg Journey is something that you're going to go, you can go through, you know, for the rest of your life, really. And once I did that, then I graduated to um, a crystal wand. I wouldn't say graduated. Um, it's not like a process you have to go through anything specific. But then I went with a crystal wand, which is like a dildo. Okay. Um, there are some that are just straight. Uh, there are some that are definitely shaped, right? Like different right. Um, shapes. I went. <laughs> there you and go. is that rose quartz? This, this is rose quartz. Okay. Yes. Wow. This is rose quartz. So the one that I got was um, a wand, and so it's just slimmer on one day end, it's thicker on the other. And when I tell you that I have had experiences where I feel like I'm in other dimensions. Mm like ridiculous so it's like the combination of like the yoni eggs of being very connected with myself and with my body it's like full body orgasms wow. now I have this wand and this wand is like I'm in parallel universes where it's like I had an experience where I'm using my wand and I was like seeing myself as a third person, like seeing me and my kinky boo on the bed. Right. Yes. And, um, he, he goes to hold my hand. And when he holds my hand, I transport into my body 
Wow. And then it's me. I'm there. And then at the point where we orgasmed, he texted me. Whoa. Mind like, blown. Like, what? what? <laughs> like, and I'm not saying this is everybody's experience, but when I talk about it and people who know about wands, they have had similar, like, similar stories of, like, really feeling like what they're, like, whatever their fantasy is, it just, it feels really, um, like you're in it, you know? Oh my gosh. The universe was like all aligned, like everything at that moment. So with your wands, do you have to charge that one since it's rose quartz? Yes. So I would typically you charge all of your crystals. So you want to cleanse them. There's a variety of different ways you can use salt, um, you can use water, you can use sunlight, you can use moonlight. Um, it just depends what is what is going to suit uh, suit you. Um, and you can continually cleanse it. So like I keep my wands also like on my altar and my yoni eggs. And now I've got to a point where it's like I have a crystal grid of my yoni wands <laughs> with my egg. And my dad was going to install an AC the other day. And I was like, I need to cover <laughs> my crystal sex toys because my dad is coming and he's going to be like, what, what the hell are you doing? What <laughs> like, is this? <laughs> no, Mija. He's going to be like, no. Um, but yes, it's been very, uh, very next level in my like spiritual and sexual growth, mm-hmm. you know, because it's for me. And it's not just about the pleasure or the orgasm. It's like, what, how can I learn about myself? And that's kind of where sexual frequency was birthed to of just this, this transformation around sexuality and intimacy um, as personal development, you know, not just seeking pleasure, but seeking to learn, to, to learn about myself and about, you know, other partners. So I just I, like I feel so fortunate to be able to have a platform now to you know to talk about to talk about all these things like new paradigm ways of thinking and seeing the world it's it's really exciting. Yes, again like I said like I'm appreciative of your platform as well because I'm a woman and there are so many things I think me and a lot of other women we just don't know about our body. We don't know the the power that our bodies carry. Um, So I do think it is important for you to share, you know, what you've learned and give those tips and and, and have people explore because I think the topic of sex, especially for women, is so taboo. Like it's been very taboo. Like you said, you're either a whore or a slut if you you talk about it. Um, But I think it's, we all have sexual organs. Like it's who we are. Like God created us that way to be, you know, to have these organs. So I think to know about it as with anything, like we, we want to know, like if our head is hurting, like, why do I have a headache? Like, what do I need to do to prevent this headache or with anything? Like we need to be learning our bodies and how they react to different things. So I definitely, I'm so glad you have sexual frequency because it's, it's interesting to me, like, and it's not always about just the orgasm or the pleasure It's really to get people to learn more and kind of to dig deeper, which is really, it's yeah. the, like, yes, um, <laughs> those to you, you have a Thank fan you. in me, like I told you already, <laughs> um, but I do want to know, so, you know, you, you, you're a goddess as in through and through. Um, but how do you share that with your boys having two sons? So how do you share that your goddess energy with them? Um, uh, I'd love that question because I feel like we have to, like I'm raising men Mm -hmm. and that's how, that's how I like to, to see it. And so I'm very open on discussing anything around, um, sexuality, there was a moment where I was making like erotic candles Mm -hmm. um, and they were uh, penis shaped and my sons came home and there was like a, like a big one, that BDE candle (laughs) and then like a smaller one. And my oldest son, he's 12. So he's like right in the middle of puberty. And then I have a six year old. Same. My son is 12 too. Okay. And he is very much like, he does not like discussing anything sexual at all 
with me, right? He has to talk at school. He talks to his dad. Right. He's opening up a little bit more because I want them to be comfortable in their bodies, you know? Yeah. Um, and he's like, mom, what do you, what is that that you have in the ki- kitchen? And I said, oh, they're candles. They're penis candles. My six-year-old heard that and he ran to the kitchen <laughs> and he comes back with a little candle and he was like, mom, um, can I compare this to mine? <laughs> And I said, Papi, I said, no, like, this is a a man, like, you're still six, like, when you're older, this is what it would look like. But he asked all of the questions, right? So it just opens up to beautiful conversation around, like, one, not being embarrassed of your anatomy Mm -hmm. and what it looks like, and for exploration to be okay and to be acceptable. Um, I... There was a time not too long ago where they were kind of questioning the divorce. Oh, okay. Um, and I made it a point that like their, you know, their dad had cheated. He was just not wanting to be married. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, they will find out when they're old enough. I I don't need to speak any negativity about their father. Amen. His yes. ability to not be a good husband does not translate to fatherhood. Yes. And and so um my oldest son, he had a crush and he's like, mom, I have a crush. And do you think anyone's ever going to like want to be with me? And you know, all the things as a 12 year old boy. So I'm, I'm so happy that he talks to, uh, to me about the emotional pieces. And I said, of course, you're going to find someone. I have a crush too. Aww. And I was like, and, and my crush doesn't like me like that either, but it's okay. We're going to get through it. And then my six-year-old says something like, are you talking about my dad? (laughs) My dad, your crush. And I said, no, baby, your dad is not my crush. And he was like, like, but why? Like, why would you get a divorce? You know, this is my six-year-old. And I was like, babe, it wasn't my choice. You know, it was your dad's choice. And then my son's like, oh, mom, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, it's okay. Like, relationships change. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay. I'm doing fabulous. And my six-year-old was like, what? Like, no, ma'am, you are not fabulous. I'm sorry. (laughs) Like, you know, he's grappling with this idea of like, but you loved him and wanted to be with him. How are you okay that you're not? And so it led into a beautiful conversation around like this idea of monogamy. And I was like, you don't have to love one person for the rest of your life. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be just one person. Like we are made of love. We are made to share each other and that's okay. Mm. Like it doesn't have to be happily ever after I get married and that's my whole life. And so I think just the ability of me to be as honest as I can with them at the level where they can understand. Yep. Um, is is big um my son actually came into my room the other day and he my vibrator was out Mm -hmm. it was like a you know a standard looking vibrator and he's like mom what's this and I was like Bobby it's a massager (laughs) like we have this it's a tool you know so he was like what do you mean it's a tool like so I turned it on and I you know like we put it on him and um wow but i just like i don't want any of this to be taboo Absolutely. you know and my or oldest son, like dirty like this is yes. like sad so you don't want to give it that negative connotation either and you don't want them Absolutely. to learn it from like the kids like other kids or like seeing it on tv like i would rather you learn it firsthand from me yes see it mm-hmm for sure. And my 12 year old is starting to like, not want to run errands with me. Like, oh, I don't really want to go to Target. <laughs> and that mom part of me is like, Oh, hell no, you're coming with me to Target. You're only 12. But then I think like, no, like he needs time by himself. Yep. Without his little brother, you know, tagging along with him, like, he needs time to start exploring his body. And all of that is okay. And so we talk about that a lot too. Like, 
exploring our body is like normal. It's healthy. I actually have two um, paintings in my room. And one of them is like, it's the, it's a representation of the universe. And then it's this beautiful alien and the universe is like behind her and like, you know, eating her from the back. <laughs> uh -huh. And then another one where he's eating her from the front. Wow. And, um, my 12 year old saw it and he was like, that makes me uncomfortable. And I said, that's okay. Like, cause this is, this is mom's room and that's something that adult people do. Um, and it's normal mm -hmm. and it's natural that you're uncomfortable. And then my six year old is standing there and he's looking and he was like, I feel like that's going to be me when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so it probably is, you know? <laughs> So I have the spectrum of both of them, but, you know, I don't want to, to feel like I have to hide Absolutely. myself or my expression. And, you know, some people might say, oh, you're exposing them to pornography or whatnot. And it's like, no, I don't condone kids watching porn. I'm going to put that out there. Don't at me. <laughs> right. Uh, I did not you know? say that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, like, uh -uh, nope. So, so yeah, that's, that's just kind of how I do it. And just like being as authentic as I possibly can and explaining it to them in ways that it's like age appropriate. Absolutely. And I, again, brum, 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 shout out to you. You're doing a great job. Again, I have a 12 year old son too. And my son is totally like your 12 year old. Like he, and you know, I've had conversations with him about sex and he, he started to have like this little girlfriend and, you know, me and him are talking. So my son too, very much like the emotional questions. He comes right to me like, yeah. okay, I feel like this, like my son is very affectionate still. Like he wants to hug me and kiss and all that type of thing. Um, but then when we talk about sex, he was like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable talking to you. Like he just well, told me that. And I'm like, okay, well, if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. But how about talking to your dad? And he was like, yeah, I think I would rather talk to my dad about it. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like I ain't going to be mad, but here we go. <laughs> um, and I do think it's important to, you know, expose them, like you said, in an age appropriate way, because I, for me personally, like, I don't want my son to come across it from kids at school. Like yeah. I was, like, I was exposed to the people that at my school who were, you know, doing stuff like having sex and, you know, when we were kids, um, or, you know, just my own background of being molested. Like, I don't want him to have, this is my idea of sex and this is what it yeah. is. Um, so I would, I love that he wants to talk to his dad, which is great. Um, and I love that he wants to talk to me about the emotional side of it, because I do think that will help him be, you know, like you said, we're raising men, like we want yeah. our boys to become men to go out here that respect women's bodies, that understand like no means no and all of those and women are goddess like I want my son to understand that. Yes. Um, so yes, I totally agree with you. Shout out to you for doing the work with your boys. Yeah. Um, and you're saying they're and, and they're gods. Yes, I tell them that too. It's like, and you are gods. Like, yes, the goddess is the prize, but the god is also the prize. Yes, so we are prizes to each other. You know, so yeah, yes, we are prizes to each other. I love yeah. that. That is so sweet. Yes, yeah, so keep on doing what you're doing. Your your six year old, he needs his own show. Like, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jackie and I were talking about having an episode with my son on, so that might be in the works on Ladies' Night. <laughs> yes, bring the boys because I love them. Oh my gosh, that is so amazing! And like I said, you're doing a great job, Mama, with them, and we have to keep that in mind because the the world will teach your kids before you have a chance to Absolutely. And i think it's important that as parents you get in front of that before this world does mm -hmm. um but thinking about all of this and you have your platform i know on your show you talked about becoming a not a sex therapist what is it what is it the um somatic sexologist okay and what is that yeah um so a somatic sexologist is someone who can help you get into your own body, get in tune with your own body. Um, this belief that I've always had before I even got into the school around um, our body has all of the answers. We just simply need to take the time to reconnect with our body. Um, and I got into this school because there was that piece around um, like masturbating and feeling like 
there was no spirituality in it for me at times. And sometimes it's okay. Sometimes you need to just rub one out and it's good. But I wanted to tie in that other piece, that other part of me that is like, this is not just pleasure. It is so much, it's so much more. And the more in tune I got with my body, the more pleasurable things got for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And now I get to the point where I can self pleasure and my body will respond to me almost in full sentences. Wow. You know, so I do a practice, a self pleasure practice, and I try to do it every day where it's just maybe like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I can set some music. Sometimes it's in the bath. Sometimes I set a candle, um, some incense, some intention. And I just allow myself to move and breathe and just touch my body in whatever way feels good. And sometimes that leads to orgasm. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But it's very um, soothing and healing for me and very problem solving. Like I can give you one scenario when I was going to thinking of pitching a show for the network. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it with Nico, with Nicolette, who has her own show now involved with Nicolette. I was like, yes, great show. And I was like, I'm gonna do this with Nico. And I did a self pleasure session and my body was like, no. You need to do the show by yourself. Mm. And I was like, no, I'm doing this with Nico. And my body was like, no, Mm. you're not. And I was like, okay, I just heard that. And then I went to ladies night the next day and Jackie was like, oh, did you hear Nico was pitching her own show? And I was like, and my body was kind of like, I told you so. (laughs) (laughs) I told you. (laughs) Yeah. And and the show that I had conceptualized with Nico was so different from Mm. what sexual frequency is. Wow. No, this is really what I'm being guided to. and, And I need to do it, you know. And yes, I do it with Rick Rock, you know, but he is more of like, um, he definitely sets the tone and the mood for the show, you know, and I appreciate his opinion, but it is very much like just um, driven by, you know, ideas that I have and concepts that, that for us to talk about. So, yeah, so somatic sexologists can help you really get in touch and in tune with something called like em- I like to use like embodiment meditations Okay. Um, that I will actually start putting offerings out for one on one meditations. Actually, just we launched today Nico Fest with Nicolette. We are going to host we're going to have an event coming up soon and I will be doing embodiment meditation. Um, okay. I have, we have to share that. So I'll grab the flyer yes. On the stage. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And so, yeah, so that's basically um, somatic sexologists and just can help you work through different things, like through different blocks that we have, like maybe identifying like where the shame lies in our body. When we first started feeling certain things, you know, of when we started having to check boxes to be normal. Yes. Right. Like all of those things and really just like now going away from that. Of like, no, no, that's old business. Like we're in the new world now. Oh, I love it. Yes. I kept hearing you say it on your show. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I know it's not a sex therapist, but that sounds really dope. So mm-hmm. yes, congrats to you on that and getting Thank that. You. Um, so throughout all of this journey, um, sexual liberation and discovery and healing and crystals and you do a big trip. What do you think your purpose is for sexual frequency? Like, what do you want the purpose to be? Oh, my gosh. I really, truly, in my heart, believe in a fluid future. And that, to me, is not having to define um, your sexuality or your sexual preference or whatever it is that you like. It's just the world is what it is and we can all be open and fluid to be loving with whoever it is that we choose uh, or not right I say fluid future doesn't mean everybody has to be bisexual or be attracted to this it not at all it just means that we can do it without judgment Mm -hmm. um so I feel like it's kind of paving that way of like changing mindsets around intimacy and sexuality like shedding those old ways, you know, uh, around also like monogamy is not the only choice. There are other options there. Um, 
we are living our lives so differently now. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I, uh, I would love to just empower as many people as possible to live authentically and live in their truth without the shame and guilt, because our sexual energy, it's like, it's our life force. It's our creative energy. It's where we birth things from. We were all born from it. We were all born from sexual energy. Um, so to having, if I can support people in just getting in touch with that part of themselves, I feel like, like I'm doing a good job, you know, ushering in the new paradigm. Oh, I love it. That was a great way to like <laughs> seal everything in. But before we go, we always do a to-go box. So um, let me think, what am I taking away? You said a lot of really cool things. And again, I just love sexual frequency. I love the platform. I love what you're doing and where you're taking it. Um, but I think for me, one thing that I'm going to take away is just um, – get an understanding of my full body and not just like the pleasure aspects or orgasm, but just being in tune yeah. more so with my body. And I think I'm starting that journey now by just paying attention to what I spend my time on or what I let myself mm -hmm. view. So I think it starts like whole body and not just, you know, only my sexual organs, but I do want to get there too, like really understanding yeah. my yoni um, and just exploring my body and, and being comfortable being the almost 35 year old woman that I am. I think, you know, we place so much shame on our bodies, like having these expectations of what it should be, or, you know, what it could be or whatever, or just reminiscing on what it was when I was 18, but I'm not an 18 year old girl anymore. Like yeah. I'm almost 35 years old, like embrace the grown woman body. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, I think that is what I am going to take away. Just being more in tune with just my full body, mind, and soul, like working all together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Goddess Lode? What are you taking away today? Gosh, what I'm taking away is the aspect that you brought in around my boys. Mm -hmm. I've never been really asked that question before, and, and um, it hit different. You know, it's almost like, okay, like I'm, I'm talking the talk and I need to walk the walk with my boys and just like all of the beautiful opportunities that come up with that. So I'm going to take, I'm taking that with me of all of, all of the things that I do, um, influences my family and my boys and, you know, what better way than to raise them with that thinking and mentality from when they're, you know, from when they're young to just mm. be fully and authentically themselves. Yes. I love that. And I can't wait to hear more. So hopefully the boys get to come on the show. <laughs> um, so make sure you all tune into that and make sure you all tune into sexual frequency with goddess Lode um, on the TGN Latin X network. Mm -hmm. So be sure to download the good news radio app so you can take a listen to that and that is all I have today. Again, miss you, Sherry Renee. Can't wait to see yes. you feel better. Um, but thank you for tuning in to Brunch with Besties podcast. Until next time, peace.